What happens when you survive a plane crash but are rescued by a crazy old couple that tries to set you up with some voodoo magic, feed you with human flesh and well have a wayward son that oddly enough resembles John Coffey and a goonie. Well in this video we follow the crazy story of Marquise, look at the insane experience he has to go through and figure out more efficient ways on how to solve his problems and beat the voodoo spell in Spell 2020. Let's go! Marquise had an abusive father growing up, but in spite or because of that, he grew up to become a relentless top-notch attorney who has all the luxuries life has to offer. A beautiful family, check. Success in his job, check. Private airplane and the license to fly it, check. An ego to match it, <laughs> absolutely. But every lucky strike has an end, and his strike ends today. At work, an unexpected phone call informs him that his father has passed away. But because of the difficult past he shares with him, he struggles to understand what this really means. Will he pay him a last visit or will he just ignore it and continue with his life? Well, at dinner he consults with his family on what to do. And we learn that in his childhood he ran away from home and never looked back. He cut all ties with his old man and lived independently ever thereafter. But despite that obvious resentment towards his father, the family decides to honor his death and go for a final visit. Now heading over to the funeral, they fly over the breathtaking fields of Kentucky and casually stop by an old gas station in the middle of nowhere. Which is odd, um, I mean can you casually land at the random gas station and refuel your plane just like that? I have never seen that. In fact, if there is anyone out there from the states that can confirm that this is actually being done like that, then please let me know in the comments, I'm burning to know. Now a lot of foreshadowing is being done here. The gas station owner is selling mojo bags and other witchcraft protection items trying to pass some to Mark, who absolutely declines. Question. Would you have accepted these witchcraft medallions or not? Well, I hope not, because you see, if you believe in witchcraft and you choose to buy a mojo bag from a stranger, you risk buying a cursed item instead, because you simply don't know what's in there or who has made them. And if you don't believe in that stuff, you wouldn't care anyway, right? So either way, declining is the way to go here. Now back in the air, a storm is slowly brewing itself together. A lightning seems to hit the airplane but Marquise refuses to land because he knows that he can do it without landing. Um, yeah, well no, uh, I think you should land this goddamn plane my friend. If your plane is being tossed around from left to right, you may want to stop being a cocky lawyer for once and do something that isn't linked to your ego. His conduct is a clear mistake here. If you're flying a lightweight airplane that has a single engine that is being tossed around by wind all the time, odds aren't in your favor. I mean, if you don't pay attention, you will be drowning in your family's puke faster than dying from 30 degree burns after you've crashed a plane. Now instead, contact the nearest watchtower, go for an emergency landing and pray that you will make it. Now anyway, before any of that happens, Marquise wakes up heavily bruised and disoriented in an old attic not knowing where he is. He notices that he sustained a bad foot injury but tries to walk anyway. Now before he can figure anything out, an old lady comes to check on him. Confused about everything, he asks what had happened and why he is in her house. Now she changes the topic and obviously dodges his attempt to understand the situation which is a pretty bright red flag. Why would this woman hide anything from you if she has saved you? And Mark, concerned about his family, understandably raises his voice. But that doesn't work either, because now she screams for her husband Earl and her wayward son Louis to calm him down, because she is the woman in this scene and therefore the victim. Marquise gets even more agitated, demanding to know what had happened to him and his family. Earl then tells him that he was the only person found in the airplane and that they took him in to heal him. Now Marquise is shocked because suddenly he remembers that he has survived a plane crash. Now more alarmed than ever before and worried about his family, he is put to sleep by some magical satanic fairy dust or whatever the heck that was that is blown into his face. Now anybody who has played Red Dead Redemption 2 knows to deal with these old couples living a backward life somewhere in the countryside. We already know what this couple is about and the last thing we want to do is therefore eating anything from them, drinking anything from them or have them become suspicious of us. 
What we want to do is pretend to be decent patients, smile and nod whenever being asked something, and arm ourselves the minute they leave the room. One great thing about their obvious primitive lifestyle is that there are certainly no cameras in this room surveilling us 24-7. So what I would do is remain calm, wait until they've left, and then wait for my injuries to heal, and then get the hell out of there. While he's passed out, the lady creates a frightening voodoo doll linked to his body. Once done making it, she goes back to Mark and wakes him up. Mark, again ignoring all previous red flags, starts begging her to call an ambulance, assuring her that money is not a concern to him. But she brushes this off by saying that the nearest emergency is at least 50 miles away and that she doesn't have a telephone. Another strange fact that should ring the bells. Now, weirdly enough though, she shows him the voodoo puppet that she has crafted. She says that whatever good happens to the doll will also happen to him implying obviously that everything bad happening to it will also happen to him. Now in this day and age, people know about voodoo stuff. At least everybody has heard of it. Now whether you believe in it or not is not the point here. The point is that you are stuck in a house full of crazy people that have created a voodoo puppet that looks like you. I don't think I need to explain why this is not a good place to be at. Eloise, this lady, is clearly a witch or a schizophrenic maniac with ill intentions. Either way, you don't want to be stuck with her. But the fact that the closest emergency is 50 miles away does not invite a thoughtless escape. So here's what to do, or not to do. Marquise tries to find a way out and is able to unlock the window behind the door. He climbs out of it, crawls over the roofs, but didn't pack the doll, which was the worst mistake yet. I mean, would you be comfortable with a crazy person possessing a doll that looks like you and claims that it's linked to your body? Hell no. I would grab that little doll and protect it as if it was my own baby. Ain't nobody touching this doll, alright? He comes across a large gathering at the nearby barn. They brutally sacrifice animals to cure sick people. First, they use a cat's tongue to make a mute lady speak and then take a goat's eyes to make a blind man see again. Whatever the hell is going on, why would you waste your time observing it? There are two great things happening right now. First, it's raining heavily, meaning you can escape without being heard or seen, which is the best possible scenario. And second, everyone is currently gathering and don't seem to leave anytime soon. If you wanted to escape, this is the best time to do that. But Marquise doesn't, because he stares into this barn like a person on shroom stares at flowers. And once the old man can see again, he looks up and sees Mark and points at him. Great, thanks a lot, bud. Knowing that an escape is now too late, he crawls across the roofs again, quickly returns to the window he climbed out before, and just barely makes it back in time. Now Eloise and her squad rush back and find him soaked in bed with the window next by open. He tries to lie about why he is wet and why the window is open, but of course that's just ridiculous. If I were him, I would have gone full Shakespeare mode and pretend to be sitting at the window crying over my missing family waiting for my prince to come to rescue me, but agonize over the fact that my hair isn't long enough for him to climb up. But anyway, she locks the window and leaves him for tonight. But if I were this, right now I would not stay here any longer. After seeing what had happened at the barn, I would keep my doll out of anybody's reach and reconcile with the fact that I may need to slay some people before I can leave. But before we become the murderous person we strive for on Binge Express, the following morning Marquise wakes up to the sound of a notification ring, but quickly forgets about it after he notices a plate of stew near him. While Eloise goes to get him another plate, he takes the opportunity to disable the bell at the door that stops him from escaping unnoticed. Which is a great thing to do, right? Risky but inevitable unless you fancy climbing out the window again. The only thing I would do differently here is hide that metal piece somewhere else than in my pocket. The last thing I want is Eloise finding it with me and have me tied down. This would be the worst case possible. Now when she gets back, he asks her about the telephone ring from before, but receives a straight up lie. He does the right thing though and plays along, knowing that he won't receive any meaningful information from this woman. One of the best things so far has been the fact that Marquise has stayed extremely humble and friendly throughout this stay here. Often characters in such movies let their emotions run wild and f things up by the minute, but not this guy though, so thumbs up for that. After she leaves, he plays around with the leftover bones from his past meal and figures out that it's a human hand. Um, well, 
if you needed a better reason to leave, then it doesn't get better than this. Now, what surprises him the most, though, is the fact that it looks just like his son's damaged hand. He gets up, immediately picks the door's lock, and sneaks out. He quietly manages to snatch a flashlight and is able to escape the whole house. His foot injury makes it difficult, but the thought of his family pushes him through until he reaches the crashed airplane. He finds splatters of blood all over the place, but no sign of his family. If there is so much blood around that has not been cleaned up, chances are you will find a trace. He looks around and eventually finds a house in the forest. But before he can reach it, Wayward Lewis comes out of nowhere and knocks this guy down. It would have been beneficial to arm yourself before leaving. There were many objects laying around in the attic that could have been used for such purpose. And if it's only a glass shard, so be it. But you don't want to remain incapable of defending yourself. After the unsuccessful escape, just like in the video game, he wakes up in the same attic again as if nothing happened. He goes to the window to check what's going on and sees that Lewis and the couple are leaving the property. But before he does anything rash, he unwraps his foot and finds a massive nail stuck in his heel. With no time to waste and no desire to walk on a pierced heel like a psychopath that gets a kick out of excruciating pain, he single-handedly pulls the nail out like a savage. This is either a mistake or the best thing to do. You see, pulling out a large, sharp object stuck in your body comes with the significant risk of tearing up large blood vessels and soft tissue, leaving you with a leaky and very painful injury that may even makes it more difficult to escape. Pulling out the nail is only a decent idea if you will apply a compression bandage afterwards to stop the bleeding. Now Mark wastes no time and goes to search the building. A great thing to do. He rushes to the barn and finds a secret room full of corpses, voodoo dolls and shelves stacked with magic and spells. The most curious thing of all though is that he also finds a century old photo of the trio, proving that they have been using magic for immortality. Now if anything this should be a red flag because Magic is one thing, but hundreds of years of experience in cooking people, kidnapping them and eating them is a whole different story. Nevertheless, this is a great stash to find. The sleep dust itself is enough to get you out of there. All we gotta do is surprise them with a blow at the right moment, tie them down and get the hell out. He also finds a voodoo doll crafting table and somehow creates one himself. It's not very clear who this is for, but fighting magic with magic is not a bad idea. Now hearing a phone ringing again, he chases the sound and finds his son's phone in a box. He grabs it, turns around, runs back upstairs and decides to push the nail back into his heel to cover up his findings. Now once they enter the attic, they immediately check on his foot to see if he had removed it. Well played, Marquise, well played. Now after being left alone in the room, he wastes no time and tries to unlock the phone. Which is stupid because at this moment, the phone only has around 1% charge. Look, at 1% battery, you don't take any chances, right? Instead, you just call the emergency straight from the locked screen. It's 2022, my friends. It's 2022. Now, he calls through and the sheriff on the other side recognizes who he is and drives over immediately, knowing exactly who these people are and where he is. But Eloise has other plans. He was apparently too loud and now she goes upstairs to stop him in whatever he's planning. She grabs the stole, unplugs its tongue, and pins it down. Magically, Mark can no longer speak and can barely move. Now, to be honest, it should have been always clear that as long as this stole is linked to his body, there is no real escape possible. Instead of having her grab it, he should have found a way to deny her access, aka use the powder he found in the barn. But he doesn't. And if it's not already enough, the sheriff arrives at the same time, but is unable to spot Marquise because this one cannot scream. Now, having not heard from him and with no trace of him around, the sheriff decides to leave again, which is ridiculous considering that he has received an emergency call 20 minutes ago. What did he expect? Kidnappers to freely say, our victim? Yeah, he's upstairs, but <laughs> you can't see him. No, that's not possible. I mean, come on. But anyway, Mark, despite all of his disabilities, escapes through the back of the house while they are busy with the sheriff. He somehow stays on the loose until nighttime when he somehow conveniently stumbles over the sheriff's car. He gets in, unties his doll to ease his physical restrictions and tells him to, well, escape. 
Now what I would tell the sheriff is to drive me back to the gas station where I know for a fact are anti-magic bags laying around waiting for me to grab them. Then I would hold them in front of my face and say Be gone demons! Be gone demons! Be gone! Be gone. Be gone. In a disturbing but funny fashion because I just probably dropped too much acid a few days ago and I'm tripping and none of this is actually happening. Now the sheriff drives him back to the town and reveals that he's been cooperating with this couple for god knows how long, luring people into traps and making sure that they will never be found. Now things are bad once you know the police sleeps with the authority. I would have snatched his sheriff's gun straight away, blew his head off and drove back to the mojo back cellar and brace myself for winter to come. Maybe also shoot Eloise on my way out. But Mark, too perplexed to think about that, is brought back to the barn where those freaks intend to proceed with some sort of blood moon ritual. He briefly sees his family though, who seems to be under the influence of a spell, but at least they seem to be alive. Now Eloise starts the ritual, but before she can stab his heart, Mark wakes up and stabs Earl instead. And that is what you get ladies and gentlemen, when you deny the reality of UNO reverse cards. It turns out that Mark switched out the content of the wake up sleep dust bottles when he was scavenging the property. Genius chess move. As all hell breaks loose and the attendees start running around, he uses the opportunity to wake his family up again. They seem to be quite alright and he escorts them out and tells them to follow the river until he finds a car to escape. But instead of getting the car first, he does what anybody else would do, he goes to meet the sheriff, slashes him open like he makes some chick fil -A, and uses his car to escape. Hell yeah. But instead of escaping, Mark decides to take revenge on anybody else. I personally would have just let that stuff in the past, but nothing goes over a Tarantino revenge spree. Although, instead of going empty handed, I would have looked for extra rounds in the sheriff's car and then went in, like Django. He enters the barn again, meets Lewis, and of course the fight breaks out. He's easily overpowered, but can turn the table by drowning Louis' voodoo puppet right in that moment. I'm a big fan of dramatic revenge, but god, there were so many possibilities. I mean, what would have you done instead? A drowning seems to be pretty okay, but I like fire a bit better. Well, anyway, Eloise takes her chance at this moment, but is quickly put to sleep with her sleeping dust. Then, using the voodoo doll he has crafted before, he tosses her around, literally, like a doll. To top off the bloody menu of today's Blood Moon event, he uses salt to lock her evil spirit into the barn, leaving her to burn alive and finish off what has been going on for hundreds of years. He then threatens the villagers to set their voodoo doll box on fire too if they try to hurt him. And then he drives off to safety with his family in the car. Now, let me ask you, what would have you done instead? Would you have survived this situation and how would you have done that? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see you again soon. Peace out and binge another one.